in Ishnua, Philly's home for contemporary Irish plays, is opening their 21st season with a bold adaptation of The Playboy of the Western World by Nigerian playwright B.C. Adugan and Irish writing icon Roddy Doyle. This spinoff of a classic Irish story is set in modern Dublin as a Nigerian refugee arrives at a rundown pub with a wild tale he hopes will save his life. Major support for the Playboy of the Western World has been provided by the Pew Center for Arts and Heritage, with additional support from the Government of Irish Immigrant Support Program. Get tickets online at inishnuatheater.org. Thrive Flower is Philadelphia's first same-day cannabis delivery. They offer a wide range of products, so you can find something or multiple things that works best for your unique needs. Thrive Flower is selling third-party, lab-tested, real THC products, including flour, pre-rolls, vapes, and gummies. Head to thriveflower.com and use the code CityCastPhilly10 for 10% off your orders. Today on CityCast Philly. Okay, you just got a text from your friends and they want to hang out this weekend, but you just don't know where to start the night. I'm speaking with a local food and travel expert about how to navigate Philly's nightlife scene, grab some of the best bites and dance the night away. It's Monday, September 16th. I'm Trina Nuri and here's what Philly's talking about. Alicia Miranda, freelance food and travel writer. Welcome back to CityCast Philly. Glad to be here. Glad to be back. Excited to talk. Alicia, Philly's got so many options when it comes to what to do at night. You wrote a really comprehensive list for Visit Philly. But just to start off, if you could grade our nightlife scene in Philly, what would you give it? A plus B I love that question. I think we're like at a B plus. I think, you know, we're bouncing back from the past couple of years. I think, you know, doing research for that guide was like, I was really surprised at how much there was to cover. So I'm going to give us a B plus. Before we talk about how to get that B up to an A plus, let's talk about what's out there. First off, who drives Philly's nightlife scene? Is it the new restaurants, bars or venues Or is it social media influencers or food writers like yourself? I definitely think it's the amount of bars and restaurants that keep opening. And I think in talking with chefs in front of house managers, a lot of them tell me they want to be able to serve food and drink past 10 p.m. They want to be able to get that late night crowd or they also want to be open on days um, to get industry people. So people who work within hospitality that might be off on a Sunday, Monday or Tuesday, um, they want to be open on those days to offer you know, food and drink options on those nights as well. So. I think it's definitely what we're seeing in the last few years, especially the last two years as we've come out of the pandemic is just the explosive volume of new bars and restaurants that are opening that are getting people excited to go back out again. I would love to see more happy hours on the weekends. (laughs) Okay, I plus one that. So let's get into some of the recs. You have a whole bunch of different categories, but let's start folks off at the bar. And there's so many types of bars, depending on what you're looking for, right? Yeah, totally. I think that's, you know, that's kind of one of the reasons, uh, I would say the big reasons I moved to Philadelphia a decade ago is I think that we excel at the affordable neighborhood bar. In Fishtown, I really love international bars. So we included that one. I would say a standby in West Philly is Local 44. Like you can't not go to West Philly and not go there. South Philly, you've got Ray's Happy Birthday Bar. Definitely Bob and Barbara's on South Street is a great neighborhood bar. Center City has so many, but we definitely called out Fergie's Pub and McGillan's. And then in Old City, people really loved telling me about Buffalo Billiards. And then obviously Chinatown has like a plethora of really great bars. Um, a lot of people spoke to me about um, Bar Lai, if I'm saying that correctly, for the sports bar. I know what you mean, barley. And then obviously there's like upscale cocktail bars um, that is very dense in the Rittenhouse neighborhood. But also I find myself going to Queen Village for cocktails as well. South Philly, you know, I'm biased. I live in South Philly. So a a spot like Messina Social Club is is a wonderful cocktail bar as well. 
Also on your list in terms of bars, you have wine bars and rooftop bars. Tell me about those. Yeah. So I'm personally a wine person myself. So a couple of wine bars that uh, we included. Um, so the people who run the Good King Tavern and Lake Cavo in uh, Queen Village, we highlighted them. They also have a spot on Spruce Street called um, Super Foley which is really great. And they are open, I think, almost every day except Sunday and Monday. And they open up at three o'clock, which is really great. So that's a really lovely wine bar. Um, Panorama has been around for like 30 years. And that's an old city, which is really lovely. But a lot of places, um, like a lot of bars and restaurants have started to do like wine clubs and wine memberships. So like I'm a wine member at Jet Wine Bar on South Street and also Vernick, the restaurant in Rittenhouse. So they have an excellent wine list that you can tap into as well. And then rooftops, I'm an El Techo girl. That's where that's my favorite rooftop. I think the fact that it's indoor, outdoor all year round and covered is one of the, the coolest parts of of being at that rooftop. But also like Balakin Woods Lark is in this amazing building. Um, and that is one of the coolest spaces that I've been to. Um, so I would definitely shout out Lark. And then I love going to Sierra Green because it's like so unexpected. It's also dog friendly, which I love. Um, and so that would be another rooftop uh, park that I picked that is also on our list. Nice. I'm always curious about finding restaurants that people can go to for formal dining. So those special occasions like birthdays, maybe anniversaries, maybe a great place to propose. I don't know. <laughs> Where should we go? All right. So I think what the cool thing is in Philadelphia is, again, affordability. Like we have some really lovely, what I would call fine dining, kind of white, white tablecloth places that still feel casual. They still feel like you can walk in whenever. Um, so some of my favorites are the Honeysuckle Provisions um, Tasting Menu right now in West Philadelphia is one of my favorites. It's just so different. It's really focused on history and storytelling and a cultural perspective across the African diaspora. Um, so that is a, an absolute must that I would put on anyone's top of the list. I really love Friday, Saturday, Sunday. You know, they were voted the number one restaurant according to the James Beard Awards last year. I literally was there last night for several hours. It's still the best. Um, Milo can't go wrong with anything that they make at Milo. I think the most exciting one that has come back is Kampar in Southwark. Yes, Chef Angie. And she has a wonderful menu that has all the familiar favorites that she had on Passion with some new stuff. And she does a late night menu now. So... Um, that's a good one to go to. Um, and I really love Forsythia. Forsythia in Old City is like so gorgeous. It's French. It's like if you want to indulge and like treat yourself or have that special occasion, I do think it's a good proposal spot. Uh, <laughs> Forsythia is definitely one um, to go to. You did mention the affordability aspects that are on a lot of Philadelphians' minds, but there are some places where we can splurge a little bit. On your list is the tasting menu at Ambra in Queen Village. How much is that? It's 300 bucks all in. So what that means is like you're paying for like a multi-course meal. I believe they're at seven or eight courses right now. You get your wine pairing. And if you don't want wine, then you can do a beverage pairing. But it also includes tax. So it's like you're paying for pretty much everything right then and there. And you're taking care of the entire night. It's like a two to three hour affair. You start off with like a little amuse-bouche, a little welcome cocktail, and then you sit down at a beautiful communal table with like, I think it's honestly like 10 people. Or you can upgrade to the chef's counter where you're literally in the kitchen watching everything. But it's one of the most extravagant meals I've ever done and so like well worth it and so fabulous. The food is incredible. The hospitality and service are top notch. So if you want to, you know, if you just got a promotion and you want to spend that money, definitely check out Ombra. And take me with you. Okay. Yeah. Um. <laughs> Get a plus one. <laughs> Alicia, I've got friends who often ask me about late night dining, you know, other than just pizza and fries. What spots are open for late night bites? So I am always going to Polly G's, which is like, I believe on Pine and 13th around that little corner. Shout out to the bartender, Brenton. Hey, <laughs> great bar, like great, like people watching bar or you can watch the game on 
I am biased. I used to live in Brooklyn for a long time and Polly G's was my favorite pizzeria. So once they opened here, I was all in. So that is one of the places that I go to late night. Good Dog is open late, which a lot of people love. Um, I'm personally very happy to see Jim's back on South. Me too. Me too. <laughs> like the amount of times walking around uh, at 1230 trying to find some food. And now I have my Jim's back. I'm very excited about that. <laughs> I'll just say this. Those cheesesteaks are still just so good. One of the best in the city. Like, don't know how they do it, but God bless them. So there's also Royal Tavern, um, which is here in South Philly. And they open late. They stay, their kitchen is open till one, which I think is incredible. And that burger is phenomenal. It's got some long hots in it. A lot of people love Fountain Porter as well. Fountain Porter is open till like 2 or 3 a.m. You can't beat the $6 burger. It's incredible. Um, I was also recommended a lot of um, places like 12 Steps Down, American Sardine Bar. Um, I have some friends in West Philly, who, you know, the best Philly people. Um, so Dalak, Gojo, Nanu, Zepsinia, those are all open. A lot of those places are open to like 3 a.m., which is like so great. Um, so West Philly is definitely like giving Center City a run for its money on the late night options for sure. Alicia's got more recs for navigating Philly's nightlife after the break. What's up, guys? It's the champ, Sean O'Malley, here to talk to you about Prize Picks. Prize Picks is the best place to win real money while watching football. Run your game on Prize Picks. Prize Picks will give you $50 instantly when you play your first $5 lineup. You don't even need to win to receive the $50 bonus. It's guaranteed. Just download the Prize Picks app and use code SPOTIFY. That's code SPOTIFY on Prize Picks to get $50 instantly when you play a $5 lineup. Prize Picks, run your game. Must be present in certain states. Visit prizepicks.com for restrictions and details. This episode is brought to you by Pacifico. When a happy hour drinking Pacifico beer with friends turns into hopping onto an LED bike taxi. Taking a taco tour across the city. And becoming honorary members of a 90s cover band. You found what was waiting for you. Pacifico. Life's waiting. 21 plus only. Discover responsibly. Pacifico Clear Beer. Imported by Crown Import, Chicago, Illinois. Alicia, oh, I got so excited when you said Dalak in West Philly because it made me think of the music and the DJ and party vibes that happen there. Where else in the city can people catch a DJ set or vibe to some house music or reggaeton? Yeah, so I've been going to BW Sounds, which is a DJ residency where they have like a, a multiple DJ lineup and they have been doing... Um, summer sets out at the IBX stage on Spruce Street Harbor Park, which is incredible. It's just like such a lovely, chill vibe. Like everyone's just living their best life. It's free. You know, you can pay as you go for the, the drinks that they have there. But it's an easy, chill evening. They also set up shop at the W Hotel Wet Deck. So they've been bouncing around town for many, many years, but now they pretty much have residencies at that IBX stage and the W. I also love Dave P from Making Time, who usually does his annual festival at Fort Mifflin. He's been playing at Bach Bar, um, so he's one to watch out. There's also people are really into disco, which I'm so here for. Um, so the Trussell Inn is a must. The Dolphin is a must. Warehouse on Watts also does like disco heaven nights, which is really cool. And then, of course, for reggaeton, I mean, I'm going to be very biased, but like there's no experience like Tierra Nightclub, the Colombian spot out in North Philly on North Fifth Street. Like that is an entire experience of its own. But, you know, Cuba Libre and Brazil's are still going strong in Old City, which is great. Mm. Fishtown, I used to be that girl that used to go to Kung Fu Necktie every Saturday for, like, the Drake nights. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes. I'm very much that person. Um, so shout out to Kung Fu Necktie. There's also St. Lazarus Bar, which is awesome and has been around for a long time. So I think, like, there's still those old you know, not old, but like the standbys that people have been going to for years. Right. The classics. For sure. That are still going strong, which is really nice to see. And then, of course, you have your classic like neighborhood spots like Woody's and U-Bond, too, where people are going dancing. 
What about on the waterfront? Ooh, so now you've got one of my bucket list items this year is to go dancing at Mashulu. I've never been, but I'm dying to go. Um, so I did have to include Mashulu because like that has been on my list for like 20 years since I first started coming to Philly. Um, there's also Liberty Point, which I just recently visited. It's such a cool like multi-level indoor outdoor experience that they've got uh, DJs and live bands playing. Morgan's Pier, still going strong. So that's a good one. So the Delaware River waterfront is really awesome too. I'm curious if like on the West side, if they'll bring live music um, or anything like that to the Schuylkill River Park. But, you know, the Delaware River waterfront is really holding it down. Well, speaking of live music, I mean, on that side of town in West Philly, so we're getting like towards University City area, you've got World Cafe Live, which is, you know, has been around for a long time. Where else in the city can we see live music that really deserves a shout out? Yeah. So one section that I was really um, kind of passionate about giving its own right was jazz. You know, this is such a historical jazz city and we have venues that have classic jazz, new jazz. So um, I really wanted to shout out ch- jazz places like Time, Chris's, even the library bar inside the Rittenhouse does live jazz. Um, Rex at the Royal, which is a historic um, place on South Street, does, you know, supper club jazz music with Drew Nugent and the Midnight Society. You've got the Twisted Tale. And then you've got places like South that continue to like be the standard. You know, like it's just one of those experiences that every Philadelphian should do. I really like to go to the Academy of Music to see jazz. And then a lot of people um, are really loving the comeback of Boot and Saddle with Solar Myth on um, Broad Street. So jazz was something that I really wanted to include in this guide for sure. Philly also has the Avenue of the Arts. So now let's transition down Broad Street. And those who are new to the city, Avenue of the Arts refers to our theater district. Yeah. So, I mean, the Avenue of the Arts is going through such a transition. I think it's going to be exciting what comes in the next few years. For me personally, I'm someone who is constantly going to the opera. Really? I know. I'm not... I'm not a 55 year old person, but I really like the opera. Um, So that's something that I included. You can also see evenings. I believe it's Friday evenings that are returning this fall. Free recitals through the Curtis Institute. That's not too far away from from Broad Street. You obviously have the Academy of Music and the Kimmel Center, which also do like comedy. You know, I saw David Spade last year there, which was really cool. So I think that the Avenue of the Arts is hopefully going to continue to be bigger and better in the forthcoming years as they add more programming. Speaking of the arts, I really enjoy going to the Philadelphia Museum of Arts Friday Lounge series, which is like the pay what you wish admission. There's live music. Where else can folks go if they're looking for art or even film? So, yeah, so the Philadelphia Film Society has programming all year round. They have an event coming up like a singles mixer where people can obviously come have conversation starters and icebreakers and then get a screening to a movie right afterwards. So that's really cool. The Barnes After Hours is still going strong. And then First Fridays, like First Fridays is still around um, as well as First Sundays. And then Sunset Social at Sierra Green has rooftop movie nights as well. So that's really that's really cool for the art scene as well. There's other entertainment options to choose from, like drag or cabaret or burlesque shows. Where should we go to see one of those? Oh, man. So I was actually surprised at how many options there were. So Ensemble Arts does a ton of events. So they do avant-garde shows. So they do drag, uh, cabaret, and burlesque. Um, There's also Fabrica on Thursday nights that people go to. Fringe Arts, obviously, like the Fringe Arts uh, venue is such a one of a kind venue in the city to to see um, performance arts. There's Theater Exile if you want to do like Murder Mystery and the Red Rum Theory. Frankie Bradley's is still an iconic place to go see drag. So upstairs at Frankie Bradley's is, is a must. And then one of the newer ones that I Every time I talk about this place, people have never heard of it. And it's such a sleeper hit. But the Rittenhouse Grill, which is like a steakhouse on Locust Street, like right next to Park, has like a dinner and a show cabaret series. Like they have a full leopard. They call it the Leopard Lounge. And they have like a piano player and they they play Broadway hits. But then they also do like cabaret performances. Oh, I like that recommendation. 
Okay, Alicia, I don't know if you know this, but I'm not a comedian, at least not professionally, but (laughs) there's venues that showcase big names, local talent. Where can people go? So Helium and Punchline, I think, are like, you know, institutions at this point. So those are where you're going to see like touring acts for sure. There's also some like underground indie spots. So you've got Next in Line, Playtime Comedy, which is over here in East Pashunk. There's also The Lab in Ambler, which does live comedy as well. And then I learned about this uh, Philadelphia Sketch Fest, which apparently has been happening for 15 years, unbeknownst to me. So that's that's one that's really cool to check out. And then if you want to do improv or, or learn sketch comedy or write or learn how to do a stand up, then there's Crossroads Comedy Theater as well. All right. Well, Crossroads, I'm, I might be coming through. <laughs> <laughs> Alicia, I like that you point out that nightlife in Philly doesn't always mean drinking. There's plenty of sober fun that you can have. Are there a lot of options for non-drinkers? Definitely. So one of my favorite places to go late night is North Bowl or South Bowl, depending on where you live in the city. So they do like uh, snacks and drinks from 8 p.m. till midnight. Um, they have late night Wednesday specials also. So you get like discounts on bowling games and shoe rentals. Um, so I'd say North Bowl and South Bowl are, are super fun. You could always go to Liberty Grounds. That's my favorite mini golf place in the city. Um, not only is the food amazing, it's kind of like Indian American like bar food mashup. So you can have like chicken tikka masala nachos, but also play amazing mini golf. They just expanded. So now they have like an outdoor beer garden and then they have like these golf simulators and murals of different Philadelphia places. It's like such a fun experience for honestly, like all ages, like you don't have to be 21 plus. And then there's also as a biker myself, I was trying to research like especially in this heat, where can I go biking and not not sweat? So there's actual nighttime bike rides. Like you can go biking with a group through Bicycle Coalition of Greater Philadelphia. There's also the Philadelphia Bicycle Club. They do Northwest night rides and then they also do Wednesday night rides and they post their routes on Instagram so you can join them. I sometimes do yoga at the Bach rooftop with KG Strong, which is every second and fourth Tuesday of the month. And it starts from like, Six o'clock and it goes till eight. So you do like maybe an hour yoga session and then they open up um, the rooftop to you. So you can get that selfie in of the sunset and it's wonderful. I love that you put quizzo nights and game cafes and axe throwing on your list. I love quizzo nights. I've been to the one at Thirsty Dice and the Wissahickon Brewing Company. Yeah, I mean, Quizzo is one of those things that it's such a Philadelphia experience, right? Like there's so many neighborhood bars that host their own Quizzo nights. Even Liberty Grounds, the golf place that I mentioned, has a themed Quizzo night. So Quizzo is such an easy decision for a late night activity for sure. And I also think that the pop-ups of, or I should say the growth of these like game cafes is really fun to see. Um, so Queen and Rook now being the biggest one on South Street is really fun too. So if you want to have a chill night in and play some card games or board games, like that's also an option. Speaking of games, we got to shout out the casinos in town. I couldn't believe how many casinos Philadelphia has. Like I just feel for how small the city feels. The fact that we have like multiple casinos is kind of wild to me. Um, but yeah, so we have Rivers Casino, which is I didn't realize it was formerly Sugar House. So just in case you remember the Sugar House, it's the same location. So that's in Fishtown. If you're out of the city and live in Bucks County, there's the Parks Casino. And then the biggest one is here in South Philly, the Live Casino, which is like, you know, these casinos are great because they're open 24-7. So there's lots of things to do there. You can eat, you can grab a drink, you can play some games. So I know that that's been a big kind of um, draw for people in the city in the last couple of years, for sure. Before I wrap up with my last question, I do, I was, I was thinking about this. I know that like there was a a moment of time, I want to say from hmm, maybe like 2019 until maybe like when we started coming out the house again in like 2021, hookah bars were popping up in the city. Are, are they still like a thing in the city? I did not include hookah bars because I have the same question. I feel like they all disappeared. And I think it was because 
no one wants to pass germs. <laughs> like, I just, I don't think they were a, a post-COVID friendly option to keep around. <laughs> makes sense. <laughs> totally makes sense. Okay. We've talked a lot about all of the great things you can do in the city after dark, but are there any changes you'd like to see to Philly's nightlife scene? Well, I would say the two big things is public transit and public safety. So it would be great if we had, you know, the buses and the trolleys and the subways running not only past midnight, especially for people that work in nightlife. So if you think about all the people that work in like hotels and bars and restaurants that get out late and need to have reliable transportation to get to and from. Certainly having more reliable public transit, you know, timely public transit would be great. And then I think the other thing is just public safety. And I know that our nightmare is very passionate about making those two things happen. So one change that I have seen already, and I think it's going to continue, is the robust options of non-alcoholic bars and non-alcoholic cocktail lists. So on Pashunk, there is a bar called Nutmeg, which is the latest addition to the NA scene. Um, but you also have Volstead, which opened up in Maniac in 2022, which was basically the one to open the doors for an all non-alcoholic space, which is really cool. With a lot of people going sober, or abstaining from alcohol for other reasons. People are pregnant, right? Like people are watching out for their health. I think that bars and bartenders have just embraced that trend to stay. And all these like curfews and rules about where young people can go is so limited. Like it's so depressing. It's really unfair. We need to make sure that the city is fun for everyone. And I think as we think about building more like options, like we need to keep the kids in mind. That's Alicia Miranda, freelance food and travel writer. Alicia, thank you so much for joining me on CityCast Philly. Thanks for having me. You can check out Alicia's full comprehensive list of all these recommendations in the show notes. That's all for today here on CityCast Philly. If you enjoyed this episode about Philly's nightlife, tell a friend, rate the show, leave us a review, and hit that subscribe button. Be sure to sign up for our morning newsletter, Hey Philly, to learn more about what else Philly's talking about. We'll be back tomorrow morning with more news from around the city. Bye. Bye.